of, uh, of doing these sessions on uh, Music Master Training online, and we hope that uh, some of you guys who are repeat attendees have gotten some beneficial use out of these sessions. Uh, we, we reverted to a, an hour-long mode last week, and we had Brad Regal from Cornerstone take a look at, at uh, Analyst with us. This week, we're going to take another look, uh, just a concentrated look on the schedule editor for about 60 minutes. And then next week, we have Keith Hill returning for a Keith Hill Tips and Tricks on music scheduling. And he's always got some great ideas and is really becoming uh, quite proficient in Music Master for Windows, along with his other uh, software scheduling skills. So that, that is the basic, uh, that's the basic lineup for the next couple of weeks. A couple of ground rules, once again, is that uh, if you want to attend any one of these sessions, you need to register in advance. They're posted on the website under webinars. Uh, make sure you uh, register for each one you wish to attend. Also, in terms of questions, I'm sure some of you may have some questions, but with the, the, um, the number of people that we have online, answering individual questions uh, live just uh, just kind of derails the whole presentation. So, but if you do have a question that you'd like to, to ask as we go along here, uh, there's a question box on the right-hand side of your control panel. Uh, you can certainly type in a question there, and we will try to uh, respond to it uh, either during the session today or get back to you in some kind of uh, online fashion uh, in, via email. It also, if you have a support plan, make sure you contact your music scheduling consultants uh, with questions. Uh, they certainly are there to help you. Um, they can take a deeper look at what you're trying to accomplish, maybe go online with you, do a live go to meeting, and uh, you know, put some of these uh, techniques to use. Because we certainly want you to take advantage of everything that's available in the software. So Jill Sorensen is going to start today with just a basic overview of the schedule editor, a kind of a view from 10,000 feet, get everybody, you know, on the same page as to, you know, where everything's at. Uh, it's, it's quite often we find that people actually don't know how to open some things or do some things. So we're going to do a kind of a top-down look at the schedule editor um, for, for basic use, and then we'll drill down a little bit farther uh, later in the hour into some deeper functionality. So, uh, Jill, if you're ready, uh, we can uh, proceed with a look at the schedule editor. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate that. And I know you said the 10,000-foot level, but I thought it might be fun right off the bat to show some people a really cool trick. Now, I, what I did here is I clicked on the calendar icon to get to the scheduling calendar. And this tells you all the different things uh, about scheduling that you have available to you here. So you'll notice down here at the bottom of my screen I have some icons, and I certainly have a scroll bar here as well. I, if I click on a date and then click on any of these things, that's what's going to happen. So I had highlighted today's date and was going to click in the schedule editor, and that's what made me think, well, maybe some of you want to do things in a different order here. So here's a first tip right off the bat before I even walk into the schedule editor for you. You see the order of all these things right here, and it continues this way? You can change that order. All you have to do is right-click here and select Customize. And so what you see here now is, in fact, the list of all those things I have right down here. So put this list in the order that makes sense to you. It, it's in the order that makes sense to me right now. I edit, I schedule, I do check the log, I print the playlist, send it out to my automation system, I reconcile, and sometimes I unschedule. And I don't use these other two features. But if you do, bring them on over. That's what your arrows are for. You can move the things in different orders here, and you, once you click OK, you'll have all of those icons just the way you want them. Of course, that's one of the beauties of Music Master. You can customize it and make it your own. So there's your first little tip, a neat little trick that you can do to make Music Master more just for you. So let's go into that schedule editor now. I have got my little box around today's date, and so all that really does is when I double-click on the schedule, it basically goes into that date. Uh, if you're doing some of the other functionality here, what it would do is automatically pop in that box. So let's talk a little bit about just what you're actually seeing on the screen right now. Uh, keep in mind, Music Master is about screen real estate, how much you devote to whatever things are important to you. So let's just talk a little bit about what you see on this display. 
again, I've decided it looks this way. Yours might have a smaller typeface or it may have different elements available to you, but let's talk a little bit about what we currently have here. This is the info bar over here, and for my particular use, I actually don't need to see this. So I'm going to take it off so that I don't have to waste that space uh, while I'm working in the schedule editor. And you can do that a couple of ways. I've got my uh, cursor right over the icon here to just take that off. And of course, now I've got so much more room to work with. Uh, this panel over here, as soon as I click on a song, uh, is our test results panel. It tells me all the different tests that I have applied to uh, that particular category. And I know for some of you, I've looked to see who's on the attendance list today. I know there's at least one guy out there who's looking going like, oh my gosh, my list is really long here and he knows who he is. But that's okay. If you don't want to see every single test that you have on your uh, category, go to this icon. This one's only going to show the failures. Now in this particular case, this particular song doesn't fail any of my rules, which is why this is blank. Now I can leave this up here all the time if I would like, or it actually comes up every time you look for a replacement song. So um, you don't necessarily have to have it here, but if you'd like, you can. Uh, and you can just get rid of it by clicking on the X. It's actually toggled by this icon right here. So we'll take that one off as well. And now you can start to see how Look, I've got some gray space here. So if there are more things that I want to display, columns of information, I'm starting to, to develop the room to do that. I've got a couple of toolbars down here. Uh, the toolbars are accessed on that icon. I always get those two confused. I don't know about you. Uh, toggle toolbars. And when I click on that box, you'll see that I do have our selection. I really like this one. It's a great one to be able to just click on an icon and, uh, I mean, click on an hour and get right to that hour. And I also have the results bar. Uh, and the results bar is giving me snapshots of what's going on on that particular song. So right at the very beginning when I showed you how I did that right click and that opened up the customize box, guess what? It works here as well. If I right click, I get that same customize window. And when I open it up, we have all kinds of results panel options for you. If you have not taken some time to come into here and play around with some of the panels that are available, I would encourage you to take five minutes, throw them all across and see what they all look like. You may find there's one here that is giving you that little snapshot of exactly what you want to know. And of course, if you want to drag one across, you can certainly do that. Just click on the mouse and drag it or get that little box around it and pull it across. And uh, as in many places that I'm about to show you, you can go up and down like this and change the order. So watch what's going to happen right here when I click OK. Now we know it's the 18th. It's 12 o'clock. So think about all the different panels you might hear, have available to you. I've got some basic ones. Uh, I've got song rests so I can see when that song last played, when it's coming up again, if, if it actually is, how the keyword uh, or keywords are being done forward and in advance. This one I love. I tell you, when this one got put in the program, I, I really gave kudos to the, pro to the programming folks because I thought it was so cool. This is actually a very mini version of your history graph. And you say, oh, history graph, that's a great thing. How do I see that? Well, come on up here to view. You can do history graph. You notice there's also an F key function, F6. And mine will pop up. So take a look at it. You can sort of see there's that little mini version of that history graph. I make it a little bigger. You probably can see how that all lines up the exact same way. You obviously have to do a little mental calculation. You go, that's probably about the middle of my day. So you know you can see there's there's probably the middle of the day. That would be 10 a.m. There's your your corresponding uh, place. So that's kind of really fun uh, to sort of get that little mini view, see what's going on. So now we've talked a little bit about what you see, things that you might want to adjust, those kinds of things. Let's talk about uh, what you actually see as far as the information on the screen. I've got just a few columns here. Uh, what's going on is that I see airtime, category, artist, and title. Uh, you'll also notice that I've got my schedule runtime. And then I've got two columns over here uh, that are just giving me some colors. Uh, and I'll just tease you a little bit and uh, tell you that those are highlights, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's going on there. So let's talk about 
the different fields that we can have displayed here. Of course, every database in Music Master is custom designed, so that means the fields that I'm about to show you may not be the same fields that you have. That's quite all right. Uh, your fields are designed for your database. So over here on the left, I have all those different fields that I can add to my database. So just to show you how we would add one, I'll just uh, scroll down here, and I think I'll find my tempo field. There it is. Again, I can put the box around it and use the arrow, or I can just drag it wherever I would like. And as soon as I let go, that's where it will be. You also have some really interesting things going on on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, all the different colors, and I love setting up the colors. Not only is it fun, but it actually helps you see the information. Uh, and see what's going on here. Uh, and so I think, yeah, I think we're going to set this one up. This is our song graph one, and I'm just going to go ahead and give this a color just so we have one in here. And I'm going to toggle down here and turn that one on as well so I can show you that once I click OK on all of this. What we've got here is all the different colors for everything that's going to show up in the, on the screen. So you can see my non-music shows up with a gray background, the music with white. And if I move this just a little bit, you can see that jingle category for me is non-music. This is my music. So you get to change all of this. You can actually see different sizes and things that you can do here. Again, if you haven't had a chance to come in and you know, play around with some of the coloring options and, and how you want all this to look, I uh, definitely encourage you to do that because for a lot of people, seeing the color is so much more meaningful. So now remember, I've added the tempo field. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to add one more field to my list, gender. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that's actually what these stand for. So I just want to show you how if I had to sit here and look at my gender codes and read that, that might be harder than figuring out what's going on here. So. Now that we've got a couple of extra columns here, you can see I've got a lot of interesting information available to you. You can have as many different designs here as you'd like, and then at that point you can save them and have them available to you uh, for whatever you would like to do. So let's talk about some of the options before we get down to changing songs. There's so many different ways we can find replacement songs, but I really want to give you sort of the overview of what you can do here in the schedule editor as far as kinds of things that you can display. And so let's talk about that highlighting for just a moment. Uh, with the highlighter, what we're doing is we're saying this is a characteristic that we would like to uh, focus on and have some sort of color perhaps attached to it so that it sticks out a little bit better. And, and I've relegated to the simple pink and blue for female and male. And I did that by using this icon, the Song Highlight Filter. And what you can see is that you have eight of these available to you. So you might have combinations or individual characteristics that you would like uh, to control here. And uh, this is our standard filter box. So you can come down here, look at all those fields, decide which one you want, and then in this particular case you can get an operator. So I think what I'll do is just delete this one out and show you how I got that. I'm going to come in here and pick gender, and then I'll say contains any of. Now depending on the field you've picked, you'll have different operators, and I'm going to leave it with contains any of. If you know what you want, you can just type the letter here. If you've got some options, you can just go ahead and pick them and then we can go ahead and add it. That's basically what I had before. Of course, I have that highlight color, and I can name the column heading as well. So doing all of those kinds of things uh, allows me to put a color with it uh, so that I can process that information a little bit more quickly. So if I click uh, OK, uh, now what I've got is this different set of uh, colors. And again, use your imagination here. Are you concerned about the mix, uh, the flow of maybe some research scores? We had Brad Regal on last week talking about analysts. Uh, maybe in your database you do high research scores and low research scores in a field. Uh, maybe we set that up so that highlight shows you uh, a particular thing that you're concerned about. Maybe you only want the, the high ones or the low ones in a particular place. Uh, so now you can set up a code for that. You know, Whatever color works for you. Uh, a tempo field. Maybe you want to see that. Maybe you want to see the gender really doesn't make any difference what that characteristic is. You're just saying, I want Music Master to make that stick out a little bit more for me so that I can uh, just take that column and look at it. 
So for instance, um, look what I've done here with tempo. Could I set up a, 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 a highlight for tempo? Certainly I could do that. But look what I've done. Uh, I set up that graphing with my different colors. And now I've got the colors of the uh, tempo. And it, it's giving me a little bar line here. So I can just sort of, as I, as I scroll down, and I'll, I won't do this really fast because I know sometimes on the internet, with the internet, it's a little tough to see it. But as I scroll down, I don't necessarily have to look at the numbers here. I can just look at how far that blue line has come across. And, you know, if that, that's not a good color scheme for you, again, you have that whole Windows color palette um, that you can adjust here. Um, so the idea is, is to find that highlight and, and make it your own so that things stick out. Um, while you're doing this, of course, that's why screen real estate is, is something of an issue. So that's why I went ahead and, and, and hid the info bar. Uh, of course, I'm making my screen a little larger so that you can see uh, the information a little bit easier. Maybe on your machine you might make the type a little smaller. Of course, the smaller or larger you make something, that's how uh, much information you'll be able to display. For whatever reason, though, if it goes a little too far, uh, on your screen, you will always get that little um, uh, scroll bar going across if you add some more fields uh, to your display. Okay, now let's talk about what you can do uh, if you have um, a song and you're looking at it. And maybe you say, you know, I'm looking at this song and this really isn't a tempo 555. All right, don't have to go back to library maintenance. You can take care of that right here. You've got a song card icon, and that song card icon will let me call that right up, and I can either type into this field, this is our edit helper button, and I can go ahead and, and change one of those codes if I want to, or all of them. In my case, my tempo field is a three-digit field, and that's saved. You don't have to press any other other keystrokes, nothing else to do, don't have to go to library maintenance. This has been saved throughout the whole program. Uh, and I click, and you'll notice that's updated right away. My graph is a little longer. So anytime you're in here and you see something that's not quite right, you can stay right here and make that change. Now there's one other panel that I'm going to talk about in just a little bit uh, so that it has um, uh, analysis information. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but what I want to do here now is talk a little bit more about um, replacing music. And there are so many different ways to do that. So I want to take some time and go through some of the uh, common ones uh, first. And then we'll talk about some of the little ones that uh, are a little bit more uh, complicated. Uh, and I mean complicated in the sense that maybe you don't use them as often, that sort of thing. So first and foremost, we don't want to play this song. We just want to play something different. Now, if you just want the most rested song, that's pretty simple. Uh, you're going to take, oh, I clicked on the wrong keystroke there. You are going to, oh, I did it again. My apologies, folks. Um, you're going to click on Shift F9. And what will happen when you click on Shift F9 is it's going to find the best testing song that's available to you at that point, and it's just going to put it in. So you can see what happened. Gone was Christophori's Dream, and in is now Neil Diamond's Play Me. Uh, so if you're just looking for that best tested song, no extra work to do, Shift F9. Now, if you actually want to decide what song goes in here, maybe look at what kind of options you have available to you, then I would recommend uh, a double click of your mouse. That's one way to do it. F9, if you're a, a keyboard fan, will also do that. And what will happen is that we will have our replacement window. Now, you'll see some things that are familiar to you from when I just started. Um, uh, several of the icons here on this toolbar are familiar to you. Uh, so again, if I want to decide what fields I'm showing, the fields I have available to me, I can do some things with colors and, and sizes. Uh, you'll notice that this is a little smaller than what's up here. Uh, I also have the option to have different views and, and save different views uh, as I do this. Now, the big thing that you want to set up here is actually how the program is going to tell you which songs are available. 
In this case, I have mine set up to only show me perfect songs. That means that the only songs I will see on this list are the songs that pass every single test that I have applied on that category. Now, you may not have songs that meet that stringent standard. Uh, so back it up a step. I just want to see the songs that don't break my unbreakable rules. You know, maybe something like a day parting or an artist separation. So if I click on that icon, on this particular moment in time, there are still aren't any other songs that meet that criteria. But for many of you, that will actually lengthen your list. And what will happen is you'll see what rules they violate over here in this test panel. Now, the final option you can do is show all the available songs. Now, with this one, of course, I know I'm going to get more selections. Now you can start to see what I was talking about. This very first song that comes up on the list actually breaks several of my rules. Uh, it, first of all, and all, first and foremost, violates artist separation. And, of course, that's pretty obvious because the song right before it is the same artist. It's also violating some of my other rules that I have in my database. And if I started to click down through this list, I would find that all these different songs breaks some rule or another. Now, I'm the human running the software. So if I decide that I really want to do this, I absolutely can pick that song. I can click on the green check mark and do it, or just double click on it, and it will come into the scheduler. And so maybe as I looked at that, that original song was there, and I decided I didn't want to play it, not a problem. Maybe I decide I want to do that twofer on the fly and go, you know what? I know it's not Tuesday when I'm doing my two for Tuesdays, or it's not Wednesday when I do my three for Thursdays. It's just Wednesday. So I'm just going to do two songs in a row by Basha, and I can just go ahead and pick that. And even though it violates the rule, I'm still able to go ahead and select that. It's going to tell me that, and that's okay. And I'll come up with some other ways to do something like a twofer on the fly. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the different ways that you can find replacement songs. So if I right-click now on the um, particular song that I'm on, I've got lots of different options in this context menu. Uh, but one of the things that I want to show you is schedule song. And there's a couple of really interesting uh, options here that I want to talk to you about. First of all, F9 is what I just did. That's the double click on them. And most of these are, are fairly self-explanatory, but these are the couple that I'll get to in a little bit, talking about doing those twofers on the fly. But the couple I want to show are at the very bottom of the list, actually. Uh, first of all, any kind of queries you have in your database, those uh, reports that you're calling up music, those are all going to show up here. Uh, so for instance, I have a, a coding search where I can look for a particular code. Um, that will come up right here. If I have any saved song lists in my database, those will show up here. And I can call that list right into the replacement window. Um, but you know, talking about, you know, different things that you can see here and sort of digging down, you know, we've done the, you know, the easy replacement song, this is how you replace a song. Talking about something just a little deeper, let's talk about the last two options here. You know, so often when you replace a song in the schedule editor, what people forget is that given the, the number of songs that Music Master had available at that particular moment in time, that was the best song to play there. Given all your rules, that chunk of the library that it was looking at, that part of the category, that was the song it should play. Well, what happens when you take that song out? It's, it's just not there in the schedule editor anymore. And that's why I love this last option. Music Master thought that that song should play there based on all of the rotations, keeping things in sync so that you get good rotations and categories turn over and songs turn over at a good time and an average time. Um, but now if you start messing with the log and changing songs and flipping things around and taking things out, some song that should have played in that log isn't there anymore. But guess what? Remember that was that uh, Barry Manilow song I took out, right? So if I said, what are the replacement songs that I've taken out? Guess what songs come up? Of course, I took that Christophori's Dream song out, and I took that Barry Manilow song out as well. So now this list is only populated with the songs that I've replaced in the schedule editor. Uh, so you can use this as a handy way to get that song back in. Music Master really thinks that song should have played in today's log. Uh, and so maybe I decide that you know, maybe it, that song didn't work in the place that it was at, but now it works a little bit better in this position, and I can go ahead and pick it. And as I go ahead and change different songs throughout this log, I can always come back, right-click, 
get to schedule song and come down and look for that search uh, search that list of, of replace songs or delete it. Uh, certainly sometimes maybe you schedule an extra song in an hour, decide you don't need it. Again, that's been deleted. That'll show up on this list as well. I know a lot of you out there uh, have, have tight rules on your database because you really want Music Master to uh, work hard to find that best song. And as a result of that, you sometimes get an occasional unscheduled position in your log, and you're okay with that. Um, this option if you really are concerned about timing that log and making sure you have that 60 minutes, uh, will allow you to find a song that fills the hour off for you. Uh, so again, two of the options that maybe you haven't had an opportunity to play around with. So now that you've seen a couple of the more unusual ones, let's talk about some of the ones that you may have used, maybe not, that maybe are a little more common. And we're going to talk about these two, Control-Q and Control-R. Both of these are controlled by the field that you're in. So I'm going to stay on Basha, just because I know in my little demo database I have a lot of music by her in, in it. So when I do Control R, what happens is the fields are automatically populated for me in my query box. Uh, you'll notice all the categories are picked for me. Uh, you'll notice that it's already filled in my uh, field here for my filter. It's already set to equals, and her name is already in here. So all I have to do is click OK. And I'm going to get a replacement list of all the other Basha songs in my library that I would like to play, and I can pick any one of those and look at them. Again, I'm on the triple flag, so I'm going to see everything, including things that violate minimum rests. Uh, again, I can pick anything I want here, or I can simply uh, close out the screen and decide, you know what, the song I had there was the best one. I'm going to click cancel here. Now that one's specific. Control Q is a little less specific. So if I do Control Q, now you notice it's only the single category. And the artist is still filled in here, the contains is still filled in here, but the artist name is not. So now I can go in here and say, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of another artist I have in that category off the top of my head, and I think we'll go with that Midler. And I'm pretty sure I'm spelling that right. I'm going to cheat. Yes, I did spell that right. OK. And I'm going to add it and click OK. And now all of her music is going to come up on the list once it does its little test. And again, all of the uh, processes are going to be done here. So as the user, I will know if it's violating any of my unbreakable uh, rules in my database. Now. One of the things I know you guys are doing when you're looking at your log, you're trying to sit there and think, what did I play yesterday in this hour? Uh, you know, I want to make sure that I've got some good separation or, you know, maybe it's just a little bit different. Uh, one of the things that we have available to you is called our vicinity viewer. It's accessed by this icon, and this one lets us go ahead and figure out what's played in a different uh, day and a different hour. Now I'm just going to make this a little bigger, make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. So let me stretch this up a little bit. Now you'll notice the song that I was on, and you always know that by your pointer column, uh, was that Basha song. So now I can do a couple of things. First of all, I'm now looking at five hours of my log. So I first of all can see what's played around that time frame. And I can change that right here. Uh, I can also go to a different day. So if I click on, say, the 17th at 1 a.m. and use the Go button, now it's going to go ahead and show me the 17th, and I can see everything that's going on there. Now, you'll notice right off the bat, I've got a Basha song in the 1 a.m. hour yesterday. So there's no rule in my database that prevents that. Maybe that's not important to me in the way I'm trying to do the flow of my radio station. Maybe it is. Maybe through using the vicinity viewer, I actually realize that's going on. And now maybe I decide, you know, I really don't want to do that. I'm going to stick a rule in my database that will prevent that so that the person who's listening at 1 a.m. tomorrow won't hear another Basha song because I know they're going to hear a song by her at 1 a.m. today. Now, I can tell you, I've got this set up with description, which means um, title and artist, uh, and that's your primary and secondary fields in your database. Uh, so I see uh, title slash artist, 
If you want, you can change that to other fields that you have in your database. Uh, so if I wanted to just see the artists, I can do that if that's a simpler view for you. This is one of those places in Music Master where once you set up what you want to look at, what your window size is, it's going to retain that setting for you. So tomorrow when you come back into this or later on today when you're editing the log, that will still show up that way. So the vicinity viewer, a nice way to see what else is going around when you're making this change. Now, we've looked at an F9 uh, and a double click to just replace that song. We've looked at how you can uh, look at the songs that have uh, been deleted or, or removed from your list. Uh, we've looked at how to do a very simple control Q and a control R to bring up that graph, uh, bring up the, re, the, the query in order to do the replacement. One of the things that I know uh, happens, certainly for me, uh, is that I already know what I want to play, or I'm pretty close to knowing what I want to play, and I want to whittle the list down right away. Uh, so, for instance, I, I would love to say that I have St. Patrick's Day songs in my database. I don't. So I'm going to revert back one holiday and go back to uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, let's say you're doing a, a theme or you're doing something where you know part of the title. You don't know the whole title, but you go, I, I just want to play some kind of love song here, some song that's got love in the title. Uh, we call these wild cards. Uh, it's direct data entry. There's three different ways you can do it, and I'll demonstrate all of them. So First of all, you have to be in the field that you want to do this on. So that's the first trick. And then uh, with direct entry, if you're looking for something that contains uh, information, uh, the syntax for that is two dots, what you want, and two dots. Now, it's going to look like I'm overwriting this information of this title. I'm really not. So I do dot, dot. I want something that has love in the title and I do dot dot again and then I press enter and what's going to happen is it's going to look through the library and find every song that has L-O-V-E in it and then I can go ahead and pick one and again all my rules are here I can change my flags to whatever I would like and I'll just go ahead and pick one of these songs even though I know it breaks a rule that's okay I can do that maybe you know what artist you want to play so you come down here and you say, oh, you know what, I want to play a song by Bette Midler. Yeah, I know there's one right below it. I'm just doing that because it makes it easy. Um, you can just type her name. Now, I could type her whole name if I wanted to, but maybe I can't remember. Does Bette have two Ds in it or does it have one? So I don't want to misspell it because this is an exact match. So I do the first part of her name because I, I do know at this point it has two Ts and I hit dot dot. So this one is starts with. So whatever you type and dot dot is starts with. And I press enter. It looks through the library and there are the songs. In this case we'll decide not to make any change and I'm just going to hit my escape key and it goes away. Alright, let's say I'm really being confused today and I can't remember if Bet has two T's or not, but I do know that Midler only has one D. So I know how to spell her last name, but not her first name. Well, we just reverse the syntax. So now we do dot, dot, M-I-D-L-E-R. And I press Enter. And I'm still going to get that same list of songs, but now I've, I've used the back concept of the uh, direct data entry. Now, we can even take data entry one step further. What if you already know that you really don't want to play a tempo 555 song there, or a sound code this, or a gender that, or fill in the blank of what that attribute, that code is that you want? What if you decide that you really want to play something a little bit more up-tempo? Up uh, you can just go ahead and type that code right there. So I'm just going to type in 666. Now, again, it looks like I'm typing over the information. I'm really not the song card for Celine Dion is not being changed in any way, shape, or form. I'm just using this as a search tool. It's only going to look in, it's going to look in my database here, and it's going to find the songs that have that tempo code and, sh and show that list on my screen. Of course, I got all my Christmas categories. That's what's going on here. Uh, and I can go down, and I can sort this list any way I would like. It's currently sorted by song rest. 
I'm not even showing the tempo field, but these are all my six, six, six songs. And I can go ahead and pick the one that I would like. Again, this one violates a rule. How do I know that? I could have seen it in the results panel, but I also know down here. That's what this little flag is going to do for me. It's going to go ahead and tell me uh, what's going on. And this, in fact, might be a good opportunity for me to talk a little bit more about what you see down here in this little panel. Uh, of course, I can see the date and time down here, uh, but what it's also telling me is how I'm doing on this particular hour. Uh, so I can say that this hour's got this much music in it. We're this much short of getting to 30 minutes. Uh, and this is the sweep time. Uh, the sweep, in my case, my sweep markers, uh, done on my clock. Uh, and I've checked off those log notes to make them sweep markers. And so it's the, it's the amount of time between the sweep markers. And of course, I'm at the beginning, so we've got a little bit more time there. Uh, I'm in this particular shift. So let's just say I come down to the noon hour. You'll see my shift changes. Uh, and I'm not on any particular song right now. I'm just on the hour marker, which is why you don't see anything here. As soon as I click on a song, uh, it will tell me if that's failing any rules or not. Keep in mind, you're most likely to see the green or the yellow flag here. Uh, that is because green is going to tell you that song is perfect. It meets all of your rules. Uh, yellow is simply going to tell you that there is some breakable rule on your list that that particular song is violating. So uh, we've done the typical replacement. I'm just trying to go through my checklist and think if there's any other really cool way I can think of to have you replace a song. Uh, and I think for the moment, I'm just going to go back to my schedule list. Oh, that's right. I was going to do the two first. I'm glad I looked. Um, I want to show you how to do these twofers on the fly. Uh, so there's a couple different ways you can do it. It's uh, son of a gun. Look at that. Noted by the, uh, the uh, keystroke commands with twos in them. Uh, so control two is going to let me match the value on the previous song. Now, this again is important where your cursor is. So I've got it in the artist field and I'm going to do control two. Uh, and I should get my list of Gloria Estefan songs. And there aren't any in this category. So guess what? It knows that. And it's going to go ahead and let me check all the categories off. It's already told me exactly what it, that keystroke command did. And I can go ahead and call up that list. And I'm able at that point to do that twofer on the fly. We can also go the other way. Uh, and that was, just to refresh your memory, that was control shift to. That's what I want to match going forward. So control, shift, and the number two. Now I may get the same thing if there are no Celine Dion songs in that particular category. And there aren't. It knows this. It lets me come up and go ahead and click OK. And there is that list. Now, this was supposed to be a session on schedule editor tips and tricks. So I want to take just a couple of minutes here and talk about something that's actually set up in the back side of the program that's a little deep, but maybe will help you get a little bit more what you're looking for when you do this replacement window. So just to simplify, I'm going to escape out of this screen. I'm going to go to Tools and Options. When this comes up, I'm going to go to the Schedule Editor Options screen. Now, there's definitely some options that you can set here, but the one that I want to point out to you is the replacement song options. Because several of the keystroke combinations I have just shown you are actually, can actually be controlled by you in this particular screen. So as I use the drop down here, of course did F9, that's just the double click. Uh, we did the control one and the control two. Of course we did the control one, the control nine, the shift F9. Uh, we've done, uh, we saw the runtime search to fill the hour. I didn't actually demonstrate that one, um, but we also, I also showed you that one. And of course, I did direct um, field value entry. So let's talk about this. I was doing direct data entry. Remember, I wasn't necessarily uh, getting some matches. I was doing that control one and control two, and I wasn't getting some matches, and that box came up, and then I had to pick the categories and then click OK for that to happen. Well, this would simplify that because you could actually tell Music Master what list to use. So by default, it's using the category of the currently scheduled song or element. And that's why when I did the control one, 
uh, and the, sh the control two and the shift control two, I wasn't getting the match that I wanted. I actually had to pick the categories. So for those of you out there who maybe um, do some research testing and you've got your list of music that you, you know, this is the music I'm playing, but that you've got some stuff that maybe you actually don't actively schedule, uh, you use it for um, oh, maybe that oh wow factor, um, this would be an opportunity for you to include those categories on your list. How? Well, you've got multiple options here, uh, and the one that may be most interesting to you is just pick the list. Uh, what this does is it allows you to go down through this list and decide what different uh, options uh, as far as categories uh, you might include. And so, for instance, if I wasn't actually scheduling my spice category or if I had a hold category, I can now go ahead and include that. You can sit and do this for all of these various options. So if one of the particular keystroke options that I was showing you for placing songs in the editor was intriguing to you, um, absolutely, please start using it. But then kind of watch as you, you're using it. Are you having to get that replacement query box come up? Do you um, find that there are particular categories that you're going to all the time that you're drawing from? Let's simplify the process. Let's come back to, again, it was tools and options, and then replacement song options so that you can set up Music Master to do that by default. And of course, you do have the option, if you still want that query box to show up, you can do that. You also can then automatically sort that matching list by rest. And again, you simply click on the option, use the radio button, and pick which option you would like here, and then go ahead and apply that. And once I've applied it, I could go ahead and um, do those different options. All right, so that was sort of a that's sort of a cool one. I love showing people that one because uh, what's going on there is that you're really tailoring um, the the um, the replacement window to go ahead and get what you're looking for there. Now you've maybe you've decided you've fixed this log the way you want, and we know of course that I've done some um, twofers here to, to exam uh, show you that, which violates some rules. So one of the things I want to show you is what happens when the log's all done. You're thinking, I've got this log ready to go. Um, you, what you may want to do before you click on export that to your automation is what we call check the log. Now check the log can be accessed a couple of different ways. You can certainly go back to that calendar icon and you will see it here. Uh, it actually also shows up on the schedule menu uh, and it is located right here. Now I am in today's date and so when check the log comes up I'm going to go back to the 18th and and uh, let's see I'm in the mid uh, the noon hour where we know we have that violation just to make sure that this doesn't take a real long time to process I'm going to change my time frame here but for most of you you're going to make this um, the full 24 hours of your log. Uh, you can decide what categories you want to check the log on. If you know that you've laid out your currents and there's nothing wrong with them, you can go ahead and uncheck that category. And then the fun begins. What rules do you want to check? Now, it seems like everything is checked here, so we're going to go to none. And again, just because I know I've got that keyword um, time separation problem, that's the only rule I'm going to click on. Um, but I will tell you that certainly if you do any kind of day parting in your database that's important to you, uh, certainly any kind of keyword separation, whether that's your artists or your titles, uh, and then potentially uh, you know, any kind of flow rules that you have. You're basically doing here is asking Music Master to retest the log. Uh, and the idea is, is to make sure we haven't missed anything. And again, since I know that there's just the violation in that noon hour, I'm actually going to even shorten up this one too. Uh, we'll just make it a couple of hours. Um, once you've got this set up and you run it, Music Master will save all these options. So the next time you come in, it'll have the date ranges and things like that. So you don't have to worry about setting this up multiple times. I just don't want this to take a whole long time while we're waiting here to process. Um, so I'm going to need, Mark, your help in just a moment here. Uh, so, Mark, if you could uh, make sure you can uh, speak and let me know. Could you confirm for me that you can see that check the log report? 
I can see it. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, sometimes when we're doing our, our meetings, some screens don't show up. So before I went any further, I wanted to make sure you could see that. So again, uh, you can see the date range and the time range that I picked. And again, I just picked a small range just so that you could see an example of what was going on here. And what's going on is it's telling me all the different violations of my rules. Of course, the red flag, meaning that's an unbreakable rule. If I had had any uh, breakable violations, I would have seen the yellow flag. And this report is, of course, relatively short because I took a small time frame. Uh, but it's not only telling me that's the location of the problem. It's actually also telling me exactly what that separation time should be. It's actually telling me exactly what the violation is. This one's just a minute off. Okay, my rule's 45, it's 44, I'm not going to worry about that one. It's 43, it's 45, I'm not going to worry about that one. Oh, wait a second, that one's zero ahead? It's supposed to be 45? What did I do here? Okay, maybe that's one that I need to look at a little more closely. Or, of course, I remember, wait a minute, that's the twofer that I put in on the fly. So you may find in looking at this that, yes, technically, this last entry is a violation. The rule is supposed to be 45 minutes, and it's only 42. But keep in mind, maybe you did some changing in your log. You put in some shorter songs and some longer songs. That might not have been a violation when I originally scheduled the log. And that's why Check the Log can be helpful to you. You might have put some songs in that were shorter than the ones that were originally there. And so now all of a sudden that time frame between those songs is a little less. Maybe you don't catch that. Check the log is a nice way, especially uh, the music directors and program directors out there listening who are doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. You're in the, the program all the time. You are um, editing those logs, trying to get them done. It's a great, quick way to make sure that before you send that log, you've addressed any kind of issues in the software in that log, and you also have an inadvertently created problems that maybe you didn't notice. And I'll just go ahead and close this now when we're just here in the log. Maybe you're not displaying all the results panels and you don't have this up on, on your screen so that you don't uh, get that instant notification of what's going on there. Uh, so again, a way for you uh, at the end of the day to make sure that that particular log has um, uh, what you want in it and even if there are violations that you're okay with it. Now, there's one other little panel that I want to show, and I saved it for the end because I just think it's really cool, and it's the one I hope all of you will go away with and say, yeah, that's the thing Jill showed me that I want to make sure I go set up in my database, and it is our schedule analysis. Now, what I'm going to do first is just go toggle that on. I actually have it set up already. I'm just going to drop it down there, and I'm going to come into the window, and the first thing I want to do is show you what's going on. I've got our day analysis here, and that's just showing me unscheduled positions in my log. There's a setup window for that, and it's very similar to the one I'm going to show you for instant analysis. You get to pick what you're looking at, in this case, unscheduled songs, uh, and then what I'm testing against, song elements. You have your option of saying music and non-music or all, and then you've got various display options here. So, for instance, this is a quick snapshot of how many unscheduleds I have. I think the real fun, though, is over here in Instant Analysis. I've got several set up, and I'll just move this over a little bit so you can actually see what the end result is. And I'm just going to open up one of these so you can see how this was done. So it looks similar to that window we just had. So I'm looking in the current hour. I want to look at my gender female codes. I only want to look at music, and I want to test that against all my song elements. And when I, you display the information for me, I want to see how many they are and what that percentage is. I actually have the option of putting some low and high numbers in here. So if it's out of range, this information will turn red. And, of course, I get to label it. So how do you translate it? Well, that female is what drove that. The count in total is what drives this. And this is just telling it what to do. And so you can see that I'm doing a couple of different things here. I'm concerned about gender in my database. Not much of a surprise for you. Of course, you saw I did the highlighting over here, and I got my instant analysis set up the same way. This one is very similar to the other one, except we just changed the period, and I've made it the current day. Uh, for those of you in uh, Canada, 
uh, if you're listening. I know we, you have uh, governmental regulations. You use this quite heavily because you're checking uh, your songs to see if they are Canadian or not, performed, uh, created by Canadian artists. So you're relatively familiar with it in that particular mode, but consider using it for something else. You're certainly looking at this to make sure that you're in your CanCon percentages, but you may also be concerned about a, a, a gender issue or a tempo issue. Uh, you can have as many of these as you want in here. So if I go add one, uh, you know, let's say I want to do the current hour and I want to do song elements. And we want to do it against total elements and music. You just use the drop, drop down box here uh, and you can pick whatever you would like. You can see all the different uh, highlights I have available are here. All of the different, I only have one sound code in this database. All of my genders are here, all of my tempos. As I scroll down this list, all of my different coding fields are available to you. Um, maybe you're a classical station. Maybe you're, there's a certain, uh, maybe you're interested in not playing too much violin music. Uh, maybe you're a rock station and want to make sure that you really get those females separated because you don't play very many of them. Analysis is a way that can help you do that. Uh, and you can see we have some overall values that you can track as well. So this one, I hope, is one that you will really take some time in the next few days and play around in your data set. And you know, if you don't quite get what you're looking for here, just come back and, and pick something different. Uh, maybe you don't like the number and the percentage. Well, let's pick something different. Maybe you just want uh, time. There's a good one. Uh, so now you click uh, close. Uh, and we're going to get the time. OK, the males are 3.95% of the time. There is a lot of great information that this little analysis panel can provide to you in a very small space. doesn't have to take up a lot of your screen real estate, but it can provide you with so much quality information about your log to help you make that terrific log so that your station sounds awesome. I hope you found a few tricks today that will, uh, you'll be able to take away with you uh, and implement and uh, speed up your editing or give you more information at your fingertips uh, so that uh, you will get that better log. I appreciate you watching and listening. Mark, I'm going to give the control back to you. Uh, once again, anybody, if you have questions, once again, everybody, if you have questions um, about anything you saw today, make sure you reach out to Jill or your music scheduling consultant. That was a fabulous presentation. And next week, uh, uh, you, you will have the opportunity in the house for an hour. Keith is uh, certainly a recognized expert on music scheduling, a lot of people, and you will have Make sure you register in advance. Upcoming first, first, we have tools and maintenance of your database. On the 8th, setting up weekend specials, which we get a lot of about, Joe, uh, using audio files and Music Master uh, on the 15th, tax day, and on the 22nd, uh, Wednesday the 22nd, how to evaluate an inherited database. Um, we often get time calls from people who have inherited a Music Master database and don't know what to do with it or don't don't know how it was set up, getting it organized the way they want to have it organized or like the way it was organized. And, um, this will be a little bit of, uh, you know, um, a look at how to deal with that inherited database and get it working the way you want it to be. Once again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, be speaking with you again next week. And by all means, call us if you have any questions or comments. We always love to hear from you. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next week.